Type man in boxing, led the flair cops. Shout out to Goodfellas Sports TV. All right, make sure you check out my homie's channel, The Red Pill Diaries. He is the owner of the Hellblaze. So I'm pretty sure you've seen the ads on my channel. He has a new channel that he wants the information to get out to you guys. So check out his channel. It's called The Red Pill Diaries, all one word. T-H-E-R-E-D-P-I-L-L-D-I-A-R-I-E-S. For those who are listening, one word on YouTube, he wants you to check it out. So go ahead and check them out over there. Shout out to the brother Rashid for giving me first opportunity to be able to advertise on my channel. So shout out to him. Let me know what you guys think. Appreciate the love, support. Check out the channel. We go. All right, let's talk some boxing. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. Appreciate the love and support everybody showing the channel. Best way to support and donate to the channel, share the video. But we're going to talk about Ryan and Tank in a little bit. And we got some little extras for you guys coming uh, at the end. But let's talk about Tiafima Lopez and his next move, supposed to be his best move. And what we're hearing is they finalizing a deal for, or hope to finalize a deal so Tiafima Lopez take on George Camboso. And I got to say this, I felt that, and I got videos on George Camboso. I felt that Camboso lost to Lee Selby. Now, I didn't score it. But to look in my eye, I thought Lee Selby outboxed him and did a great job outboxing him. And Camboso all about power, okay? He all about getting his power shots off and really no finesse. It's no real setup, nothing. Everything is about being aggressive and not working people. And lucky for him in this era, that's what they scoring on. Ever since the Golovkin and Canelo won, when people was complaining that Golovkin lost that fight because he was going, he should have won that fight because he wasn't, because he was going forward. And basically now, most judges is basically scoring on aggression, Okay. And my opinion on that is, you post a score on what style is more effective. Who is getting hit and not getting hit the most. And that's what boxing is supposed to be about. That's what boxing is at its definition. With your hands, who get hit, who can hit somebody and not get hit. And that's what fights should be scored on, all right? And who has got the most effective style. But, I mean, this fight with Tiafima Lopez is pretty much tailor-made for him. This is actually a good tune-up slash mandatory Gam Camboso is the question. Can he take it on the chops? If Camboso could take it on the chops, you know, and uh, T.O. can take it on the chops, which in T.O., we haven't really seen him get hit with anything hard. And that's and that's this generation of boxing. You can become undisputed and still have unmarked, you know, un unmarked questions about you. You know, and that's what this era is about. Premature boxing. You know, when, you know, when the old fighters don't want to get it done and move the sport, uh, ahead, these young guys get an opportunity prematurely to get these, you know, accolades and stuff of that nature. But we don't know if T.O. could take it on the chin. We can talk about he got dropped in the gym. That's a gym when he was a teenager. Okay, he he fought punchers. You know, he fought you know uh, Richard Comey and he can punch. But the question was, he caught Comey before Comey caught him. So we still ain't seen T.O. Lopez get touched on that chin yet or that body. And from that aspect, if Camboso can catch him first, so he can. You know, basically take the punishment that Tiafima Lopez dishing out. Then we really gonna learn about Lopez, and um, you gonna learn more about Cambosa. But I think Tio gonna catch him first. And the question is gonna be, can Cambosa take it? Tio way more relaxed, way more fluid. Cambosa kind of fight tight, you know. And if I had to give him a game plan to win this fight, it's really, really, you know, Tiafima Lopez has shown weaknesses as far as when you punch, you know. He kind of freezes. So if I was telling him, I would tell him close that gap, move forward. Don't allow T.O. to get the space to counter you. Don't let him get that space to counter you. Close the gap and stay on his ass. Stay on him. Stay on him. Just keep following him. Just keep your head in his chest. But then again, a lot of fighters don't have the the skills to carry out the game plans that should be the game plan. So the corner got to work with what he got. But in my opinion, this is going to be an explosive fight. It's going to be a good fight. You got two power punches. I think T.O. got the real world-class power for Undisputed. So, Camboso couldn't help for a better scenario. Who knows? T.O. might get hurt. He might become Undisputed. He might get knocked out. Who knows? But, you know, I heard this fight has an undetermined venue. It could be in Australia. It could be in the United States, depending on the pandemic. But I do know T.F.M. Lopez don't want to defend his Undisputed title in Australia. <laughs> you know, his first, the first defense. So, Look for this fight to kind of be in the United States. I'm just having a hunch and a guess. But it could be in Australia. Australia could put up a lot of money. And also, Australia, this could help or better. This could help or hurt the case. Australia haven't really had many COVID cases. So you've been seeing, you know, Jeff Horn and uh and Tim Tzu 
have big fights there and big crowds there. So that's the good thing about Australia is that, you know, they're able to pack the venue. And the bad thing about it is you may you have to go on the road in another country where people see Manny Pacquiao get cashed out by Bob Aram and their opinion. And also you won't get the you won't get the benefit of the dot of home cooking. But T.O. coming to get the knockout, but he's probably talking about, I heard him say possibly going to Australia might be a 10-figure payday. So that's what happened when you, when you, when you, you know, you a champion. Also, not only is you a champion, you beat George Camboso, you an international champion. So who knows? He may, he may not have to fight in America, you know, in a while. He might be able to go to Japan and get that money. He might go to China and get that money. He might be able to go to the UK and get that money. He might be able to go to Central America Back home to get that money. South America get that money. So, who knows? We seen in the Hector Camacho uh, documentary that he was able to fight in Alaska. So, you know, instead of everybody hitting the same spots, you know, the Barclays, Master Square Garden, Vegas, Texas starting to open up a little bit more, even without that big Mexican-American star. Now you're kind of seeing boxing starting to open back up, but we need to start hitting them other venues. Back in the day, they fought everywhere. How about Tio Fimo fighting Australia and fighting Hawaii? You know, you talking about getting that international money, becoming an international star. That's what it's about. So, I mean, formidable mandatory. I think uh, Tio Sparkling, to be honest. But maybe Kim Bosa could take a bit of punishment. You know, if he could take some punishment and catch Tio Fimo Lopez fatigue, then maybe he might get it done. But, hey, let me know what you guys think about that fight. But let's get to Ryan. And Devin Haney, I mean, Devin, excuse me, Ryan and Javante Davis. I heard that the trainer won at least one more fight. So Ryan, I heard, going to fight Menares and possibly fight Tank Davis in September, I believe it was. Yeah, in September. So they going to get it on in September. Now, I know Canelo supposed to be fighting in September, too. He supposed to fight February, May, September. So I don't know how they really going to get away with two pay-per-view type of fights. I'm going to guess Ryan going to come to regular pay-per-view. Or they're going to offer Javante Tank Davis a big amount back to come to the zone. But then, you know, Al don't like to let his fighters, his main fighters come to the zone. But to be honest, I mean, <laughs> what's the point of this fight? You know, popularity. I thought this generation was all about building up because neither one of them got a real belt. So they're going to be fighting for the regular WBL belt, you know. And we know if a, if a, if a weak guy had the belt, they'd be going after him. You know, like a sorry champion, they at least go after getting a belt. But they know neither one of them want to smoke with Tiafima Lopez. And that's crazy that they're going to make a big pay-per-view fight and not a belt be on the line. They're going to try to put Tank regular lightweight belt on the line. And to me, this is probably one of Ryan's most winnable fights. You got a guy in Tank who don't always come prepared, don't always come in shape. Seeing that he a one-at-a-time puncher, Ryan got a better output than he do. So maybe Ryan can catch him. I'm not I'm not high on Tank as I used to be, you know. He seemed like he carrying luggage in that fight. He seemed like he don't want to fight Devin. He don't want to fight Tia Fima Lopez. Floyd Mayweather, they going for the real thing. They see what we see. They seen the fighter that's saying straight up. Legs really don't have no being. And they're going to be working on Tank throwing that left hand, overhand, or straight on the button. And they're going to be looking to knock out Ryan Garcia. But at the end of the day, I'm not paying for it. I'm not, I'm not financially supporting that fight because... Why not go fight Tiafima Lopez and then fight each other, you know, for one of them? Tank can go fight for Undisputed, but they, they'd rather go chase numbers, you know. And I ain't mad at it, but then again, don't put no $80 price tag on it if it ain't even a world championship level fight. If it ain't no belt on it. Why you can't just go, why can't one of y'all go whoop on Tiafima Lopez? You know, it ain't like his performance versus Lomachenko was like he just walked through Lomachenko. That's what's crazy to me. They all about building up bullshit fights, you know. And Ryan going around, I'll knock out Tank in two rounds. Pussy, you didn't even knock out Luke in two rounds. And that's all it's about. He going to get hurt. Don't be surprised if Linares don't don't put him down and put him out. You know, he's just a gimmick. And all that stuff Eddie Renoso working on him with, what they working on? They're not working on technique. They're not working on him bending his leg, keeping his hands up. You know, they they working on, I guess, him throwing, you know, one or two shots at a time where he ain't going crazy with combinations like Amir Khan. But I don't understand where he's getting his money at. Where is Renoso making his money at? Ryan Garcia, I feel like if I can get down to 135, which I can't, I can, I can compete with him because he ain't shit. You know, it ain't like Tank is, you know, he ain't shit looking at my wrist. Damn. He ain't like, 
It ain't like he unbeatable. Shit, he was getting pieced up by Leo Santa Cruz. So I know Ryan Garcia <coughs> was, was ready to jump on uh, Tank Davis. He was getting, he was losing to, to Leo Santa Cruz until Leo got tired and just, you know, made a mistake. But then again, that same uppercut can knock the crown off Ryan Head. And why is he wearing the crown? What is he the king of? And you ain't even got a belt. But I heard more likely September. Who knows? You know, I don't know who Tank trying to fight next. I know he kind of working out with 8B. All day. Always balling. I'm going to let my hands go next fight. So, we'll see where that's at. I heard Easter was supposed to be fighting uh, Maurice Hooker from Bowmack, but I'm not sure. I heard in the article that that's going to happen. I heard Uterman and uh, Canelo Alvarez is going to be happening in U USA February 27th. I heard Uterman, attorney, looking over the contract. And February 27th, on his own, we might have a fight. I heard it's not going to be in Canelo's hometown of Grotter, Halala. Um at all so i heard it's gonna probably be in the usa all right so and i also heard i was reading the text that uh eddie Reynoso advised ryan garcia advisor in uh de la Hoya not to put him in with tank Nick. so hopefully it's in may but yep canelo february 27th somewhere in the states to let something change verse i being uterman okay and it was something else i had to say as well too mm, that's a good and yes 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 uh, that Franco rematch with old boy that he lost to and then had a head clash. That's going to be the co-main event for um, Teofimo Lopez again and Camboso. Also, I'm hearing that Devin Haney is for sure going to have to fight uh, for Tuna next. So, I mean, I... So, that's what's going on in the lightweight division. And uh, let me know what you guys think about Teo and uh, Camboso next. And Ryan and Tank supposed to be going down. And, um... September, they say, but um, Ryan going to take court Linares first if he can, but I really want to look forward to it. Things change, but hey, let me know what you guys think. Appreciate everybody for tapping in. Don't forget, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can reach out anytime if you have a business question, inquiry, sponsorship, video request, all my social media links, description. If that's where to reach me, it's Twitter, then Facebook, then Instagram. Also, got a Facebook group. Want to make a donation? Cash app, CJGood313. That's in the description. PayPal link in the description as well, too. Appreciate the love, support, one time for the one time. Good fellow sports TV. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. We gone. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hell Blaze, at TheHellBlaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bath bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow1Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out.